that if somebody has had, had a fraction of this degree of opacity in their lens, they would be they would be signing them up for cataract surgery and up you know upselling them to a, a multifocal lens and like seriously, how could anybody take a look at this and say, yeah, I just have to learn to live with it, especially especially a retina specialist. And the retina specialist, uh, you know, said, I uh, wouldn't recommend doing a vitrectomy. Maybe that's because the potential for causing cataracts. Maybe that's the potential for, he doesn't want to muck around in the retina, around the retina. Um, so I took a look at this and I'm like, man, that's a doozy. That is impressive. And I just can't imagine what it would be like to have that thing suspended my vision now for four years. So I want to see what I can do to this here. So I'll just tell you that the first shot of the laser, it's a little startling here, to, nothing that you're going to feel, but there's a little bit of an impact. You can kind of like, kind of like that, right? And then just, so there's the Weiss ring there, that opening right there, that's the Weiss ring. But you know, that's relatively small compared to just all the other stuff associated with it. So we're going to see what we can do to this thing. <clears throat> the good news is he has really clean uh, optics. The cornea is clear. The lens is clear, nice big pupil, and the floater is, I got a little bubble, let me squeeze that bubble up, there we go. Uh, the floater is kind of in the front half of the eye, which makes the optics even better. More visible, so I'll kind of split the white ring right there, and then I'll kind of maybe chase after the end piece right there. Um, you can see with each hit there's some microscopic bubbles, you know, 20, 30, 40 bubbles that kind of come off that. And they, most of those will dissolve within minutes. And I got to chase down some little fragments here. And as I told uh, this gentleman here, should be able to make it a lot, lot better in one treatment. But there's going to be, you know, a lot of fragments. And you know, any subsequent treatments, plural, will probably be chasing down lots of little fragments. But at least I should be able to debulk and get this big, massive stuff out of the way in, in the first go. So if you haven't seen me do this before, there's two, on this laser there's two green lights, on the other laser there's two red lights, but those are my focusing beams. And so if you can imagine a cone, the base of the cone is towards me, the tip of the cone is toward the patient, the laser energy is being delivered only at the tip of the cone. So with this virtual cone are two laser, always on laser, lights, they're not doing anything to treat the floater, but they're helping me with focus. So where those two lights come together, like for instance right here, I can kind of make those green lights kind of dance around each other. When they're right on top of each other, that's where the precise focus is. So I'm kind of jogging uh, with a joystick here, I'm just kind of jogging the, that, those, uh, la those beams, you know, kind of back and forth, back and forth until I'm satisfied that they're focused right on the front surface there, like this one right here, right there. I was telling Saeed earlier, like I said, if I had a mission statement, um, it would be the usual things like don't cause harm, you know, improve the quality of life uh, by treating the floaters and treat people well and all that kind of stuff, all the very important stuff. But one of those would be like, I am in the vitrectomy avoidance business. I'm trying to make this significantly better to where the vitrectomy is not even a consideration, even if the doctor was willing to do it. All right, this is Saeed. This is day number two, kind of at the end of treatment for day number two. And um, as expected, he came in with kind of a, a constellation of debris. <coughs> came with a constellation of debris filled. Now it's just a lot of little stuff like this and this and this and a little bit of membrane-y stuff like here. This that's pretty close to the lens. I've been kind of staying away from that. Um, and a little of this. So you know, a lot of stuff. But you know, compared to that massive, massive floater that just took up all this space here, um, I gotta say I'm really, really pleased with this. So. Uh, what I haven't been filming is just kind of going through and methodically just picking out uh, little stuff and kind of breaking that up. And uh, the 
smaller they are, and it sometimes just takes like the one or two shots to, to destroy them. Um, very notable here is that there's no reformation, and that's uh, typical of Weiss rings. Uh, and this is this was not simply a Weiss ring. This was a Weiss ring on steroids. But you know, all that membrane stuff is the same thing that the white. It's this sort of highland, plasticky, brittle material that the Weiss rings are made of. Um, and they typically don't reform. So this is just a war of attrition. Break it down, break it down, break it down. Um, and Saeed noted that yesterday evening, and this was probably while his pupil was still a bit dilated, he wasn't really seeing all this stuff. And so that kind of brings up the fact of like, well, is there a role for low-dose atropine to augment the treatment? Um, now, with the amount of stuff that he walked in with yesterday and, and you know, some of the debris filled, um, I anticipate we'd probably need to do some more cleanup. So he might come back at a you know, later date. He was kind of traveling out here with family and wasn't really planning on, on staying very long for this. In fact, he actually just got scheduled yesterday. So we're here on Saturday because I just didn't like this much unfinished business. I said, come, on, come in on Saturday, I'll come in, we, we gotta, we got to do some cleanup. I know there's going to be a lot of material to treat. Um, so he might come back, do some cleanup, but in the meantime, I'll give him a bottle of the low-dose atropine, and that might really help um, reduce the awareness of just some of the small stuff. I guess you want your doctor to have a little OCD as well. So this reminds me, once in a while, you know, a patient will come to me and say, you know, I asked my doctor about floater treatment for, uh, I mean, floater treatment with the laser, laser treatment for floaters. And the doctor said something like, oh, that doesn't work, or um, it's too dangerous, too risky, okay, yeah. Um, or they'll say, wouldn't you rather, you know, all it does is break it up into smaller pieces, fragment it. You know, wouldn't you rather have one floater rather than a bunch of floaters? And well, I can't answer for Saeed here, but my guess is <laughs> that one floater was pretty oppressive. And having these smaller fragments, you know, they're, they're still kind of annoying, but not obstructive, not overwhelmingly comprehensively, you know, basically incapacitating that eye. Um, <clears throat> and you know, these smaller ones are still treatable. It doesn't mean that we, we would have to end after one treatment, and so even if there's some smaller debris. But I think it also, it betrays the doctor's lack of understanding of how floaters work. Like, what is the real problem with floaters? You're not seeing floaters. What you're aware of is the shadows from the floater. Let me try it again. Down, down the floor there. Uh, what you're seeing is the shadows being cast, or the disturbance of the vision being cast onto the, yeah, uh, onto the retina. So these, a lot of these smaller floaters, because they're far enough, they're small enough, and they're far enough away from the retina, um, you won't see them. The shadow, the trailing shadow, will just not be long enough to be cast onto the retina. And so, if I had a choice between one large, intermittently obstructive floater versus uh, a lot of smaller ones, your brain can kind of ignore. The smaller stuff and many of the shadows are not even going to be reaching retina so um, I think it just kind of shows a general lack of interest in understanding of you know floaters in general but also how the laser works and how you can have some and also you know my whole you know professional reason for existence is um, is to make things a lot lot better you know I don't say things like you know, completely eliminate all floaters you know, completely restore the vitreous to perfection, you know, turn it into perfectly crystal clear spring water. Um, I can't make those promises, and I won't. I don't use words like or phrases like that. I would rather sound a bit guarded and under-promise and over-deliver wherever I can. I can't compete with the vitrectomy, and I don't look at the vitrectomy as my direct competitor. Um, it is more definitive. It is more of a complete cure, and that's pretty freaking awesome. But it is also more invasive and causes cataracts and could cause an infection or retinal detachment. And younger patients who have small floaters are just probably not going to be a candidate for it. So, you know, it's, it's, 
an option to discuss, but sometimes it's just an option in name only. It's not a practical, functional, available option. And the other thing, too, is I don't have to get 100% to have a happy patient who's satisfied with the results. I just have to make things a lot, lot better to where they're like, okay, this I can live with. Um, compared to what we had yesterday, this is some of my best work. This is when it's very satisfying. And when the, uh, the uh, academic professor, uh, retina specialist types say, that's not a thing, don't do that, you know, that, you don't, you don't want to do that, that doesn't work. We tried it for a while, it doesn't work. I say, well, you know, you're entitled to your own opinion, but I beg to differ. And I have some pretty compelling video evidence right here, right what we're watching right now, that says, no, it actually is a thing. Um, but, and here's the big but, um, it's a very specialized skill set. I'm almost 18 years into exclusively treating floaters, uh, and it's still hard. So uh, just because your local doctor has a YAG laser, and uh, they have a paragraph or a couple sentences on their website that says they treat floaters. Um, buyer beware, caveat emptor.